This is Dorset. This is one of the most magical places, certainly in my world. And uh, it's where I've grown up. It's where Newbury grew up and stood on top of Egerton, which is an old hill fort. This morning we've got uh, the mist just rolling out of the, the valleys down below here. It is a, a magical kingdom, particularly at this time of the morning. And uh, we've got the skylarks in the sky, duelling, just as Sergeant Troy uh, used the place to demonstrate his duelling ability to Bathsheba in the, uh, the famous film and book, Far From the Madden Crowd. What we're going to do today is we're going to have a look into some of the buildings and see some of the artwork that was painted by Newbury in Bridport, just behind me. Wherever Newbury went, he brought colour. Uh, Newbury wanted to enthuse and encourage people from all across every sector. And um, in doing so, he, he had this, well, he had this belief that everybody had an artist inside them. And that's what he wanted to draw out. He wanted to bring out everybody's perspective with open-mindedness and encourage them to paint and draw and learn new crafts. But it wasn't just the learning of these crafts. Newbury also wanted them to hone their skills, to develop their ideas, and to be able to exhibit their final works. Newbury was a brilliant, uh, brilliant character. He was very flamboyant, he was very charismatic and dynamic. He was a, he was a larger than life character. And throughout his career as a teacher, he continuously, and it's a word that I'll use over and over again, he enthused. Newbury, at the age of 17, bought this enormous house that we stand in now. And he offered hospitality and the encouragement. Um, and he almost demanded artists such as Mackintosh and Cladell and Rodin and Eiffel. There were sculptors and engineers and designers and uh, painters and drawers and these creatives from all over Europe who were descending on Bridport. And the reason being, because Newbury wanted them to experience this uh, incredible inspiration here in Bridport. And so Bridport has become, over the last, certainly the last few centuries, this, this increasing mecca for a creativity. And indeed there are, within a short distance of this very building, there's a whole plethora of incredibly creative people. And that's what Newbury saw in the town. That's what, it, even though it was the home where he grew up, there was this enchanting spirit about the town that put artists at their ease and enabled them to express themselves. And so Newbury was the, the instigator. He was the, the kingpin to making this all happen and all apparent and to exposing Bridport to this international stage. After a long career, at the Glasgow School of Art some, some 30 years. Newbury was tired. So he decided with his wife, Jessie, to retire to where his heart really was set. And that was Dorset. They actually moved to Corfe Castle 
And this is where they bought a, a lovely little cottage and neighbouring chapel. The chapel Newbury turned into his art studio. And it was in this studio that Newbury decided to pay back Bridport for his life and his career. And so he painted, uh, he painted pictures for the town hall and neighbouring buildings. And it started off with this wonderful painting, A Romance of Bridport. But it became a vocation and this, this endless conveyor belt of ideas that he expressed onto canvas. And so he spent the remains of his retirement depicting characters and industry and the people and the sites and the countryside and the architecture of this pretty little market town here on the south coast of, of England. And that's what we see in the town hall today. It's an honour reviving the prize because the legacy that Newbury has left behind to stand the test of time for 145 years is astonishing. So we enthuse you to take part in the Newbury Arts Prize. Join the platform, enter the competition. Entries are open, the floor is yours. Good luck.